In today's hyper digital world where every click and swipe matters, we are diving deep into a topic that resonates with many. Payment security, especially against the involving landscape of social engineering and the importance of informed consumers. It's crucial to understand that security is not just corporate responsibility, it's a shared one. Each one of us holds a key to protecting our personal data and finances. That's why today we will be unraveling with intricacies of the Visa Stay Secure initiative, shedding light on some eye-opening findings from Visa's latest study. We will be talking trust, why it's so important and exploring the situations in which people sometimes place their trust impulsively and become ensnared by deceptive language. And of course, we will arm you with actionable tips to steer clear of these pitfalls. Joining us in this enlightening conversation is Charles Lobo, Senior Vice President and Regional Risk Officer for Central and Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa at Visa. Let's dive in. Welcome, Charles. Charles, as we kick off our conversation, I would like to center it around trust. Could you tell, please, us something more about the trust and the concept of the trust? And how does it drive digital payments grow? Sure. Thank you, Katya. Thank you for that warm welcome. Uh, trust is really at the heart of what we do. At Visa, we operate a worldwide network that enables not just payments, but it enables commerce to get done. Uh, and so trust is something that is inbuilt in every aspect of our business. Uh, trust has driven our investments. It's guiding our innovation. Uh, so really, trust is, is the cornerstone of how Visa operates. And there are a few reasons for this. What we are doing in our network is that we are enabling people to pay and get paid. Uh, and this is very vital because it's all about the exchange of value. And when there is value being exchanged, there has to be trust inherently in that exchange. Recently, we, we have looked at and we've done some studies uh, that are around uncovering the dimensions of trust. And we've come up with something called the trust index. Uh, and the trust index has identified certain components that drive trust. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that. One is reassurance. So the, the fact that you feel confident with what you're doing, you feel reassured. Transparency. So there is an equal understanding of the various dimensions of the transaction. So that is transparency and visibility. Next is expertise. So expertise is about delivering on the promises in the right way. Again, that builds, helps build trust. Reliability, again, super important. Reliability means every time you do the transaction, no matter how, how many times you do it, it's still, it always is performed in the same way. It gets completed. Someone who's expecting to get paid actually gets paid, right? So reliability is very, very important. And then social validation, which is, are the adopters of your technology uh, continuing to use it and validating the fact that there is the trust that they have placed in it has been not misplaced. Yeah, So the trust was worth it. It was worth trusting the, the technology. So all these dimensions are, are, are very, very important at building out the concept and the heart of, of trust. And that's why I say trust is at the heart of everything we do. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was very interesting and now I understand the concept of the trust. It's difficult to understand all the progress, not mm -hmm. knowing about your roots. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, take back to yeah. the roots and mm -hmm. speak about uh, how this um, Stay Secure campaign stands. Sure. And could you tell us a little bit more about your UAA in 2016? What was there? Sure. No, thank you for that question, Katya. And, uh, we are very, very proud of the Stay Secure campaign. It started in 2016, as you rightly pointed out, in the United Arab Emirates, uh, where Visa has its regional headquarters in Dubai. Uh, it was a partnership between Visa and the Dubai police. Yeah? And it was done as a survey to understand how consumers respond and how consumers behave 
uh, when transacting. It was very successful. Uh, the, one of the outcomes of the survey was that we were able to do a lot of social education campaigns, right? So telling people about uh, what is a safe way to pay, what is a safe way to transact, uh, highlighting them the importance of securing their, uh, not just their money, but their credentials and how, the way in which they would interact financially. And on the back of that success, we were able to expand this into seven markets in 2022. And in 2023, we had our best year yet because we took it to 17 markets in our, in our region. Uh, markets such as the Ukraine, uh, many markets in Africa, and very importantly, in Kazakhstan as well. So what did we do as part of the Stay Secure campaign in 2023 is we talked to about 6,000 individuals, we interviewed them, and we understood uh, their behaviors, and we understood how they engage with each other, and we understood how they engage with financial transactions. Uh, and really, um, uh, that's what, what Stay Secure has, 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 has been. It's been a, this grassroots level uh, engagement and understanding of, of consumer attitudes and behaviors. And it's thrown up some very, very fascinating results that have enabled us to generate uh, usable and tangible assets. Yeah? When I say tangible assets, it is we've created uh, educational content, which includes videos, infographics. Uh, we've, what is the purpose of all of these uh, content? The content is geared towards uh, giving consumers the necessary knowledge uh, to be able to spot scams and spot fraud when it's happening but really the 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 greatest i would say nuance and focus of this uh, this time around the 2023 stay secure is about understand do consumers understand the language of fraud mm -hmm. right that's very very important as we found uh, and we've given it a name it's called fraudulies yeah fraudulies? so fraudulies yeah. yeah we've made it up it's our mm -hmm. own name for it but it's really all about the language of fraud do you understand the language of fraud mm -hmm. so if if fraud is happening to you would you be able to spot it mm -hmm. yeah? that's been really the uh, the 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 focus uh, and we, and we've generated a lot of material and we're giving this material we've we've created a a public uh, website uh, which is available uh, on our on the visa website yeah. mm -hmm. it's called the stay secure uh, the website mm -hmm. and you can look at all the data and the information and and be better educated yeah. mm -hmm. you know uh, some numbers are disgusting mm -hmm. uh, especially 90 percent of interactions mm -hmm. of uh, scam messages yeah what do you think how to improve the skill of understanding behavior of, of scammers or how to improve our financial uh, knowledge about this right? sure yeah and you alluded to a top line number uh, let me explain a little behind that number so when we talk to these close to six thousand people one of the most remarkable results that came out was the fact that over half of them say say between 50 and 60 percent of them felt that they were very savvy yeah, uh, that they could understand the language of fraud and they could spot a fraud when it was happening. But surprisingly, of that close to 60% or a little more than half of the people, when the fraud was actually happening, they would miss it completely. 90% of them would miss it completely. So I call that costly confidence. Yeah. So it's like you you are very confident that you are smart and you you would be able to detect it and you you've heard about the different patterns of fraud and you you've heard about the scams and you feel confident yeah but that feeling of confidence is what actually prevents you from identifying it when it's actually happening and knowing when it's actually happening and that's how people fall a victim to fraud yeah the other thing is surprisingly within that same cohort of people who more than half of them who felt very confident they spend a lot of time worrying about their friends and family falling victim right so they've got this uh, high level of confidence that high level of confidence prevents them from actually spotting it when it's happening to them and then they're spending a lot of time worrying about other people right so you see this is about human behavior and human nature yeah? and we're trying to why we're talking about this and in in numeric terms and data terms because it it 
can kind of brings home to to individuals the fact that you know there's much more out there that's happening there's more to learn there's more to know and you can't have costly confidence mm-hmm. right uh, so so that's really the objective behind it could you please share with us the most significant results as your uh, payment company as visa for audience to avoid these uh, disgusting things yeah so so that's a very good question katya and you know there's there are many things that we can we, we can talk about and and cover in this space and there's a lot of the standard things that we usually say like for example keep your account information to yourself uh, your account number your card number your card data if you don't have a good reason to share it with somebody why would you share it yeah. right and this is a very primary thing right so keep your personal information to yourself when you receive emails or whatsapp messages or sms messages that have links in them think before you click yeah because uh many a time those links have been created in a very attractive form or message that makes you want to click but you really need to just pause and think before you click yeah uh a lot of banks and financial institutions in fact the majority of them provide consumers with alerts transaction alerts which is either in the form of a sms or in the form of email now many are doing in app messaging many are doing whatsapp messaging so the the channels are many but the fact of the matter is they are giving a facility whereby in real time you get alerted about a transaction so if your bank is giving it to you you know opt in for it or don't switch it off and more importantly pay attention to it so when the alerts come because many a time people kind of get you sort of don't pay attention maybe they get a little immune to it but it's really important right because this is your bank helping you know what's going on with your finances so paying attention to the alerts is is really important and then uh know who to call with your finance know your financial institution check their website uh, know where you can reach them so if you see something that's out of out of the ordinary call them immediately so these are the the very basic things that i i, I can talk about I, but i think there's something even more fundamental i think the most most fundamental thing is that if you receive a call or a message or whatever stop and think is this is this meant for me right is it too good to be true because m- most of the time the the fraudsters deploy strategies of being you know telling you that there's a the very great offer and and you fall for it so just stop and think is this too good to be true i would like to listen uh the three most important goal as a visa company for the future maybe two or three years how to avoid and how to protect your audience your users in this direction yeah so look we've uh, first of all we've invested in the stay secure campaign what we've learned from the stay secure campaign is that the way in which fraud gets conducted we've learned some aspects of that right what are the aspects the fact is that the fraudsters do three things roughly one is they create a sense of urgency yeah so there's always a urgent call to action the second is that consumers respond very positively to good news so if you are told that you will get a a prize you will respond very positively to that the third thing is that fraudsters tend to use very authoritative language so they always say you must do this or or you will i'm calling you from the government department and if you don't do this you will lose your ability to transact so we've studied and we've invested here and we've learned these three very important dimensions and we are talking to consumers about that so one of the things we are going to do is we are committed and we are going to keep doing this right because we believe that this is it aligns with our mission our mission is to uplift everyone everywhere to be the best way to be paid and get paid if we have to be true to our mission we have to commit to this because we are making sure that our message gets out there to everyone so continuing on our mission of investing and educating consumers is one of the big pillars the second thing is investing in in technology so over the last 5 years we've invested 10 billion dollars in the domain of security and protection for and the global protection. globally yeah globally we've invested 10 billion dollars we've invested in technologies in artificial intelligence we've been in artificial intelligence for the last 30 years we've been using it to run 
models that look because we look at the network level all the transactions that happen so we've invested in those models to look at out of pattern behavior of transactions um we uh, we have over a thousand cybersecurity professionals who are working day and night keeping the network safe uh so we are making all these in, in investments because this is what matters and at, at the end of the day what it really comes down to is making sure that people don't lose trust making sure that the trust which is inherent in our brand that we protect it uh, very dearly mm -hmm. yeah? yeah maybe there are some topics or things that we didn't mention mm -hmm. today and you would like to mention it now maybe there is something sure so yeah. i i think uh, the 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 important things are that as we drive forward in this wow. digital first world Yeah, we are also innovating. We are we are looking at how we uh, bring out new solutions. How we how we solve problems in new ways. How do we uh, understand our consumers? How do we have solutions that enable our partners to serve their constituents better? So we are constantly innovating. But as we innovating on new solutions along with our partners. we also innovating in how we build protection into those solutions right so uh, security and protection and innovation go hand in hand these are not things which are distinct these are not things which are separate so it's all about innovating to make the lives of people better and inherent in that is safety and security because that is at the heart of trust mm -hmm. yeah. How do you think is it necessary to collaborate with governments to build a very strong system of protecting citizens? Look, we we are collaborating with governments all over the world, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we are collaborating not just with governments, but we are collaborating with regulators. They are all our constituents, right? And and there is we we have some wonderful wonderful examples of very good partnerships uh, that are aimed at uh, enabling. governments to you know fulfill their mission as well as us to fulfill our mission right mm -hmm. and and the 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 whole point there is that we find common purpose in uh, uplifting our societies right and that's why we have some fantastic collaborations all over the world with yeah. government so uh my one of the last question is how to improve your skills as a uh, users about mm -hmm. how to avoid some circumstances of uh, digital scams maybe no. one or two advice from sure. you sure sure i i i think uh, i think the most fundamental thing is there is to be aware and present so if and 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 the second thing is to just pause and ask yourself the question does this make sense for me is this too good to be true these are very very fundamental and basic things so being aware and present is about when when things come to you in the form of offers or or you know uh, calls or or whatever messages uh if you if you don't feel comfortable or you don't feel okay doing what you're being asked to do then don't do it just mm -hmm. stop and pause and ask the question yeah uh and be aware right and and constantly keep updating yourself on on what's happening pay attention to the the you know banks and financial institutions and governments and we we run campaigns uh to highlight and educate uh, people we are trying to do a better job of uh putting these messages out in situations right so situational messaging situational education so when i say situational education it is about how do you educate at the time when a transaction is happening so how do you how do you draw people's attention at the time when a transaction is happening now there's a lot of people doing a lot of things but for the consumer it's really about paying attention to that right paying attention to that and then just asking very basic simple questions is this meant for me is it too good to be true and then you know you could be you'll be much more safe Mm -hmm. yeah. And the last question is about your aims in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. Do you can you name it or can you announce some the most global aim in Kazakhstan in this direction? Look, Kazakhstan is very important to our strategy overall. We we have been present here for many many years. We have an uh, a presence in Almaty. 
Uh, we have fantastic collaborations with partners and stakeholders uh, in Kazakhstan. So uh, we are very excited by the growth prospects and the digital journey of Kazakhstan. And as a as a global company, uh, we feel we have a role to play in supporting that growth. And uh, we are excited to be part of this uh, fantastic, fantastic economy. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to introduce our media to you. And I think it's that's all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Katya. Thank, Thank you, you very Charles. much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, Charles. Your insights into the mechanics of roads and scams and the pivotal role of the trust in our digital interactions have been deeply enlightening. It serves as a potent reminder for all of us to uphold trust in maintain vigilance as we engage with the digital realm on a daily basis. To our viewers, please visit the Visa website to learn more about the Visa Stay Secure campaign. It's treasure trove of information and resources designed to arm you with the knowledge to protect yourself against scams and fraud. Remember, the more we know, the safer we are. Stay safe and stay secure.